So if you've seen any of my past videos, you'll probably know that I have a soft spot for making music with products that are old crap, and most notably old games consoles. Well, after a few of my recent videos in this vein, I've received a lot of comments uh, about one console in particular. It's the Sega Mega Drive. Hey man, that's a Genesis, not a Mega Drive. Sadly, I haven't got the first edition of this, which is actually the best one for sound. It's got high fidelity sound, bloody bloody blah, 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 on the top. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're hard to find. Inside this, you have a couple of sound chips, including the same one that's in the Master System, as well as a brand new spangly one, which is called the YM... 2612, which is a six channel, four operator, a algorithm, FM synthesizer chip. So yeah, what is FM? FM stands for frequency modulation and it's the bad part of the 80s. Thanks to extremely popular synthesizers like 1983's DX7, which was the first real commercially viable FM synthesizer. And you can thank the DX7 for some very bad bell sounds and Christmas hits. Trust me, if you've ever cringed at a synth sound, it's likely to be a DX7. I'm pulling your leg about giving FM a bad rap. It is pretty snazzy, actually. I used to have a DX7. I sold it because it was crap. But whilst I had it, I tried to adjust the parameters within it. And if you've ever seen a DX7, you'll know that it's uh, basically a screen with like 16 buttons, maybe. And you have to adjust all of these parameters with these 16 buttons. Instead of subtractive synthesis, which you're taking a harsh sound and you're kind of filtering it to make it sort of softer, it's gonna go You're subtracting parts from it. Instead of that, it's additive synthesis, which you're sort of taking soft waveforms, sine waves, which are like soft, and you're adding them together to make them harsh by making them jagged on the sides like a saw blade. And this FM chip, can play six sounds at the same time because it's got six channels. And each of these six channels has four operators. Operators being the soft sine waveforms that you add together to make the FM sounds. Well, if you've got a computer, you could actually do it without the Mega Drive. You could download something like Plug Chip Synth, which is a pretty snazzy one. There's a video by Cuckoo. However, this is not about plugins and whatnot. This is actually uh, trying the pointless venture of actually trying to do it with the real thing. I'm using a custom cartridge made by Little Scale, who's a genius, who's also made the Master System one, and you can purchase this at Catskill Electronics. Ugh, here it is, the Sega Mega Drive, but with lots of knobs. It also makes a fabulous fashion accessory. So it's not 100% complete yet, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but I started building this about a week and a half ago, and then I gave it a spray and a little bit of a doodle, and then after a big old Christmas feast, I, uh, I put in all of the potentiometers and knobs and stuff. Whilst watching a little bit of Independence Day, you know? After painting it, I spent a fair few evenings doing some soldering. There's a lot of wires in the back. Uh, it's, it's for a simple thing, it's very complicated. So inside of this is an Arduino Nano with a piece of code that is based on a very awesome go-to piece of code that I use for when I need MIDI stuff doing. And that is the Notes and Volts MIDI controller sketch. Notes and Volts is an amazing YouTube channel and he's got some really nice Arduino synth and music projects but my favourite project of his of all is the MIDI controller sketch and it kind of just speeds up the process of making something like this work. I go into a bit more depth about how this is working over on my other channel which is Look Mum No Computer but more serious-ish. So now I have it hooked up to the controller keyboard. Uh, I haven't actually tested it yet, so um, I think that's gonna be what we'll do. And we'll do it together. Let's do it together. Oh, oh no, it doesn't work. <laughs> oh yeah, it works. There are a few shortcomings and we'll get to that and there'll be a part two of this. So you'll notice there's a heck of a lot of parameters. This is what happens with FM synthesis and this is why I've never really delved into it is because there's nothing worse than having loads of options and parameters, but you don't have any tactile feel over them. So each of these rows are separate sine waves, and it, it depending what algorithm you choose, it depends how these sine waves interact with each other. So I'm gonna adjust the attack first. Oh yeah! Oh nice! Oh that's it, the, the release. Oh there we go. Oh. 
gone ahead and added this MIDI merger, which is merging this and this together instead of sending the keyboards through it and causing it all to glitch out. I'll look into that and I'll worry about that later as there are a lot of things I need to improve on this to make it even more awesome, including polyphonic mode. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> If you look here, I can actually adjust which channel I want to have the knobs adjusting. I could change this to control channel one, two, three, four, five, or all of them at once. And this is a really good feature that doesn't work yet, and I'm really looking forward to that working. So I've got number one, and now I'm go I've jumped to number three for some reason, and now I've got channel number three playing something. Hopefully, if I bring channel one in as well. I'm going to flick over to channel 3 so I can adjust that actual one. Flick back to channel 1. snazzy poly suddenly doesn't work but the rest of the channels do so i could probably get five sequences going into here and being able to sequence all five channels at once and then just mangle with all of the knobs and i need to make the polyphony work in fact for that matter if anybody wants to have a quick look at the code that i've put up on the website which you can use and it will do as much as this and just see if there's a way able to have an omni mode because i can't think of a logical way of sending all the control commands sending all the channels at once in the arduino code uh, the, the midi library for some reason zero no longer means omni mode I'm about to shoot a small video that goes into a bit more depth into what's going on behind here and that's going to be available over on my other channel which is Look Mum No Computer but more serious-ish. 
I've been talking about this project for about a month on my Patreon as well as loads of others with frequent vlogs and build updates and people have kind of given me a few nice pointers on this. So thank you very much to the Patreon supporters because building something like this is impossible without you. So thanks. The next Patreon live stream is this week so go and check that out if you're interested. Until the next video I'll see you later. I'll be working on this a little bit more. It won't be the next video but it'll be a few down the road and when I get back to this beast. And yeah I've been looking at Mumno Computer. Don't forget to subscribe and don't be scared to build uh, uh, Sega Mega Drive synth. <laughs>